So what's up everyone? It is your girl JL Beauty 87 here, aka Grace, and today we are going to be trying out the new Makeup Forever Ultra HD setting powder. Now I bought mine in the shade 04 Tan Neutral. It's tan skin tones with neutral or golden undertones. Um of course I bought it to put underneath my eyes and the highlighted parts of my face. So the difference between this one and the original one is the original one is a loose finishing powder and it's supposed to blur the skin. Whereas this new one I got, of course, since it's a matte setting powder, it's supposed to mattify the skin. So it's supposed to help with the wear and the shine control. Whereas the original one was more about the blurring. So I didn't, I think the original only comes in one color. It's like a translucent color and y'all know translucent ain't for everybody. So ooh, it, the pouch comes, the puff comes in this little pouch and it's fancy. Okay, makeup forever, I see you got the little corner turned on it okay we, we might have to use it you know because i'm assuming it's maybe the corner to be able to fit up in the corner of the eye so i might try it on one side like that and the other side i'll try it the traditional way which is using my sponge lately i've been using a velvet sponge oh my god y'all this is kind of dark they make it look more yellow on camera so i don't know how i feel about the color is better already but let's let's open her up and investigate shall we has a nice little cute seal on it on the inside to make sure you know powder and spill out everywhere and then it has a little top i know some people don't like it i'm not necessarily a fan of it myself but as long as it gives enough space for me maybe hit the powder out and i have to separately hit it in here and then pour it in there because that's a whole thing that i just don't want to deal with so as long as it's not doing that i feel like it's okay but otherwise i'm just always like hmm and of course yes we will be doing a wear test we always do a wear test here wear test is a thing that i live and love because I'm like, you need to see how long it wears throughout the day. Like, me putting it on for 10 minutes is cute. But, you know, when you work that full shift and you come back, you know, you want it to be more than just, you know, cute. So. Sorry, y'all. A lot of powder wasn't coming out at one time. Okay, so it's looking like a... It looks more yellow on camera than it does to me in person. So hopefully it works out in my favor. It looks more yellow once we have put on these my eyes. So I have the full Makeup Forever Velvet Skin Line. Of course, I have the foundation I did a review on. I wear the shade Y505 and all Makeup Forever foundations. And then we have the concealer, which I have actually used a quite bit of. If you can't see, there's a nice little line right there. Focus on the line. But it's a nice little line right here where I have used a quite a bit of this concealer. And then I have, of course, the foundation powder that goes with this, the matte velvet skin in the shade. What? Y505 like we just talked about. So, we're going to use all the Makeup Forever products together, of course, to make them work. I do have on a primer. I don't own a Makeup Forever primer, though, so we're not going to be using that. Can you focus? Thank you. We're not going to be using that. I have a Fenty eyeshadow palette on my eyes because I want to re-familiarize myself with the her eyeshadow formula since, of course, you know, the new foundation, the new eyeshadow palette is coming out tomorrow, and I will be getting my little grubby hands on it I'm trying to give y'all a review by Friday if I can go pick it up in store but so far it's saying that they're not letting you pick it up in store like when I looked at it online and said it was um online only no pickup in store so I felt some type of way I'm hoping they'll let me pick it up in store because if they don't I'm really going to feel some type of way when I have to wait all this time and Fenty usually launches in store the same day it launches like on their website and like on Sephora's website, so I'm hoping I can just go grab it and then I'll like shoot the review Friday because Thursday's the day I work early and everybody wants to put everything out on Thursday the day I work early instead of like, you know, today, Wednesday where I can come and film stuff if the mail shows up late, which it always does. My mail people are atrocious and horrible. Well, not all of them, like my actual mail man, when he shows up, everything goes well, but it's like when I get these other people who just fill in for him. They just show up any kind of way. They leave mail like on my porch. I'm glad I live in a safe neighborhood where I don't have to worry about people stealing my mail because they just literally leave it on the porch on the side. They don't put it in the door. My mailman will put it in the door so you like hear the door open and realize somebody put something there or it's like safely secure where no one will see it. Like the FedEx man just leaves it on the porch. The UPS man leaves it on the porch. The DHL man leaves it on the porch. Like anybody else just leaves it sitting on the porch and it's like, oh, okay. So if somebody steals my package, then what? Because I know I had some packages that said they were supposed to be signed for. I didn't sign for it. They literally just left it on my porch and left and lied and said somebody signed for it. So I'm like, so what happened if I didn't actually get the package and somebody stole it off my porch? Like, how are you going to explain it to them if you lied and said that I signed for it and I didn't? Because where's my signature that I signed for it if, you know, you did what you were supposed to do? Hmm? But be that as it may, this is what the foundation looks like. I love this foundation. I feel like it 
gives a pretty nice your skin with a nice amount of full coverage y'all know i'm a full coverage queen i'm not part of this your skin but better and if i am it's gonna be full coverage your skin but better like the true skin um next i'm going to use the concealer i have the shade 5.1 in the makeup forever concealer and I, like i said i'm shocked about how much of this i have used y'all because i feel like i didn't use that much but apparently i did but I haven't reached for this in a while because y'all know I got a million concealers and stuff I had to try out this year. And y'all have had quite a few complexion corners. I think this was in one. Don't quote me. It might not have been. This came out a while ago. I don't know. But it's a really nice concealer. It gives a good amount of coverage. I'll try to remember like the video up above because I think I used the powder in that one for the first time as well. And I use this foundation. Like you all know, I try to use all the products in conjunction with each other because I feel like that's the way they work best. And I want them to work best together. So, of course, I'm going to make sure I use all of them together. How y'all feel about this clapback lipstick from Fenty? Because I have on her eyeshadow. I have the um, number 10 um, palette on. That's the green one, of course. And then I have on um, clapback. Because she had a 50% off sale on her website. And clapback was a shade I had looked at when it originally first came out. But for some reason, I um, did not get it. I don't remember why. I honestly don't remember why I didn't get it. And then it's been on sale like forever, so I don't know if they're discontinuing these or what's going on. Because they have been on sale, on the sale rate right for like 100 years, I feel like. But the formula isn't really nice, so I don't know why people don't like it. Like, what, what's wrong with you? The formula is one of her. And see how nice of a highlight I got with this concealer and how nicely it blends out. I feel like I didn't have to put in a lot of effort to put it out on my nose. I feel like I did, but I feel like I always do on the nose. I don't know what's going on with that, but last two or three concealers, I feel like I've had to do a lot when it came to blending on my nose. I like this brush for concealer, but I noticed that a lot of time, whenever I use it, like hairs are coming out of it. I'm like, I don't know what's going on with that, but hair shouldn't be coming out of my brush on my face whenever I use um, a brush. But I feel like with a few brushes they do, like with my rougher brushes, I noticed that they do as well. And then with my, um, who's that brand? Um, Jaclyn Hill and Morphe brushes, they do. So it's like, it's only a few brushes that do that. So I'm like, I don't know if it's because they're animal hair and that's why it's doing that. Because I don't feel like with my synthetic ones that it does that. But the animal hair, they just be coming out all over my face. I'm like, oh honey, okay, we don't. I don't want the hair from the brush on my face. I just want the brush to do its job. Now I have another new product I'm going to try. So I got the Kaja, Kaja, what is it, the Play Bento. I have the darkest one in Mocha Mellow. It has a powder blush, highlighter, and then a cream bronzer. So of course I'm going to use cream bronzer now. Look how deep that is. I was shocked about how deep it was. Um, I'm going to take my Made by Mitchell brush. And I'm going to just go ahead and start... Cream contour while we let the concealer sit on the face. Y'all know that's what I normally like to do, so. Oh, okay. I don't know if this is also set cream to powder. I don't. I left the box on the bed, so I'm not 100% sure. But it's blending on the skin quite nicely, I must say. Like, it, yeah, it's blending in really nicely and smooth. I don't feel like it's picking up any of the other product that I put on my face. And I'm liking the color. And I usually don't like this brush to use a butter, but I feel like it's blending it out very easily. I have another brush I usually use that's bigger, but I was like, because this compact is so small, I didn't want to try to grab the bigger one. When I use the ones in the tub, I usually use that thin, but, you know. I'm trying to bring it up the forehead a little bit since you guys see my forehead today. Y'all know I normally have the bandana covered further, so I wouldn't do this normally. But since, you know, we're here and it's available and I'm available, we're just going to go ahead and do it. Why not? I'll blend this concealer on out and then we're going to get the powder. I try to blend the concealer somewhat close to the, um, what do you call it? The, um, contour. And then I might go over with the foundation brush just so we can make it look a little more natural as well. Because sometimes I feel like the, um, Highlight is a little too low, and I want to blend it with the bronze a little bit well, a little bit better. So let's get the foundation brush and just go around the edges of this stuff on both sides of my head, real quick, real quick. 
Then I'll take the foundation brush a little bit over the forehead as well. Because since I'm not used to contouring my forehead, it looks weird. I mean, bronzing my forehead looks weird to me. So I'm like, let's fix that. Because it, it's feeling weird. Okay, now we're going to get into the star of the show, which is this powder. Um, I told y'all I would do one side with the puff. And I do one side the way I normally do it with a sponge. So I'm going to start off with this side on the puff. This is what the color looks like. Like I said, it looks quite yellow there, but I feel like it doesn't look as yellow on camera. Oh. Yeah, this, this puff is definitely helping with placement underneath the eye and in the little corner. So I feel like that's why they did that. And I'm here for it. Thank you so much, Makeup Revolution. But you all are, I'm sorry, Makeup Forever. I'm sh but you all are a makeup brand, so... For makeup artists, so I feel like you know you knew what to do, and I'm appreciating this puff so much that we're gonna use it on the rest of the fact. I was gonna do it the way I normally do, but I'm like, nah, I'm feeling this little puff, you know. So we just gonna go ahead and continue on with the puff, you know. She, she's making us look good, and we're just gonna allow her to do so. But yes, honey, now I had some hair on my nose, that's why I was touching it. You don't have to be like, what in the hell is she doing? There, there was a hair on my nose. And I was trying to get it off. Don't judge me. So we're going to pat across here. Go down the middle. I know how like so. And y'all look how smooth and nice my skin looks. It said it blurs, but it didn't say it blurs tremendously. I probably should be able to ask it does. Instead of just comparing what it says the original did to the new one. So I'll do that after I finish powdering my face. So we're pretty much done with powdering where I highlighted it on my face. So let's read what this powder actually does. It says a setting powder that extends makeup wear for up to 24 hours with a matte shine free finish and diminishing the appearance of pores and imperfections. I definitely saw the diminishment of pores on my cheeks, I must say. The finish is matte. The formulation is powder. It says it's available in six versatile shades. The setting powder gives you lightweight coverage without flashback. This product proves provides a waterproof sweat proof and smudge proof barrier to keep makeup fresh all day and includes an ultra soft pointed tipped puff for precise application yes it does and i am here for all of it it says the results the research results show 24 hour wear 24 hour mattifying 12 hours of pore minimizing 12 hours of blur effect and no flashback and it's again with the waterproof sweat proof and smudge proof so we're gonna see about it being smudge proof and sweat proof i don't know about waterproof you know we might have to you know splash some water on our face with our hand real quick on camera and see how that goes um but yeah i am definitely here for it let's go ahead and put the setting powder on now in the shade y505 to match our face and then we will do the rest of the um what has it been play bento box um stuff Y'all, I'm really loving the way my face looks right now. Like, honey, what will you tell me? Nothing is what you will tell me. Looking like this, you will tell me nothing. And I feel like the cream bronzer still holds up and looks nice underneath the skin to where I don't need to put a powder on. But me being me, we're going to put a powder on just because, like Bruno Mars said, that's what I like. So, that's what I like. That's what we're going to do. Okay? Okay. Um, so, let's spray our face with this, um... Makeup Forever setting spray. I'm just pulling out all the Makeup Forever stuff. Light Velvet Air is what this is called. Okay. Okay, y'all. So we're going to get into the blush now. And the highlighter in here. Then we'll finish off spraying my face. And then I will talk to you all later on tonight. So I'm going to pull a little plastic out of here. So I can find a little... Okay. It's a shimmery blush, so I don't know how I feel about that, but it gives off decent pigmentation and it's a decent color for my skin though. It is one of those you gonna have to build up though, so just keep that in mind. I'm gonna use a powder bronze on top of this, like I said, just because that's something I would normally do. Since I have to go out to work and all that, I need to, you know, have that security blanket of powder. Not just accepting that this cream is going to do it and that's going to be it. Because realistically, my mind is not. Um, 
you have oily skin, you don't just depend on creams. Like I don't. I always set them with powders. That's just a personal preference there. And I feel like a lot of people who have oily combination skin like myself do the same thing. So we're going to take the Vive bronzer. I haven't used this in a while. I'm going to take the lighter one and start off with that one. And then I'll put a little bit of the darker one underneath. I usually put it before my blush, but I don't know what happened. I just didn't think about it. Let's take it across the forehead of course since we saw me do it there. Okay. And so far the blushes, the um, bronzer, the cream bronzer thing I'm like most impressed with out of this entire thing. First of all because of its depth and then second of all because like the formula and how easy it was to blend out because I was like concerned about that y'all. Y'all just don't understand. So this is what all three of them look like. Typical colors that people pick for people my skin tone. I feel like this blush is a little bit more unique than other ones because it's not as very tones as the ones people normally pick. But you got the normal gold highlighter. You got the normal, uh, well, obviously the bronzer shade has to be a certain shade. So that can be helped. And then you have the um, blush. But like I said, I don't feel like it's a typical blush shade for um, people my skin tone. For them to put in palettes, they usually pick a more deeper berry toned one. So I'm liking the fact that they didn't just go with that, you know, safe route. They went the safe route with the highlighter, but, you know, a lot of girls like a gold highlighter. I'm the weirdo who wants, like, rose gold or, like, a deeper bronze or highlighter. I find, because I feel like a lot of people just reach for what I put on that, which is gold. Which is fine, you know, like, we all have preferences. It's just, I guess I feel like, because that's just such the norm and I see that so often that, like, I want something different. So I'm more like a chocolate geo girl, not like, you know, the shade I'm putting on now. But it's fine. We're just trying to try out. That we don't even have to wear this highlighter again. Not that it looks bad. It's just, it's not necessarily my purpose. Like, I'm not like, yes, gold highlighter, yeah. And this isn't as gold as like some other highlighters. So I can get down with this one a little bit better. Because it seems to be like more on the bronzy side of gold as opposed to just like, you know, trophy wifeish gold or like... Just the traditional gold, like mother likes to put on her eyeshadow belt. It's not that type of gold, so I, I can get down with this. I can, I can make it work. So this is what our face is finishing looking like, and I think we look quite nice. I'm here for it. It's a vibe, you know. I like this little bento box so far. I'm quite impressed. I probably won't have the same um, bronze on tomorrow. I'm literally just filming the intro like I do some days, so I don't have to like wait a whole nother day to film this video because since i have to go to work early tomorrow i wouldn't have time to come and film the intro so i'm filming it now at like 10 o'clock at night and then you all will see my actual face later on what i put that spray oh i put the spray up and so this is what our face looks like and i must say i think it looks quite nice i know the um blush doesn't really go with my lipstick i feel like it goes with my eyes though because if you all can't see i have navy blue in my waterline so i wanted my lip to match that i was gonna run the green on the lower lash line but i decided when i get home i'm going to do some more instagram pictures and i won't have to redo the, my lower lash line to get that done so we're not going to do that i'll um do that um tomorrow when i do whatever i look i do tomorrow but anyway i will check in with you all at the end of the night okay girl okay so you look okay y'all so i have returned after many hours where in my socialite sandy voice no um but it is now 12 40 um i've had this face on since I want to say 10, 15, 10, 30. Um, let's see what it looks like. Because as usual, I just sat my behind down. and did not look at my face at all. I mean, clearly I can see it in the monitor. But like, I want to get close up on the pores and all that good stuff there. So hold, please. Um, wow. This stuff did an excellent job, all things considered. The only place that's really oily is really, really right up in here by the nose. But everywhere else you can see, like, it mattified the crap out of it, like it said. Because it said it would do 12 hours, and I'm definitely feeling it. It also did an excellent job of blurring, pretty much. I mean, after a while, it's going to go away. But I feel like it held the oil quite well, all things considered. So I am quite impressed with this powder. I like the coverage. I love the mattifying of it all. I love the fact that it blurs initially, but I mean, after wearing a mask for 10 hours, I'm just glad it's still any blurring left whatsoever. Um, if you're curious about what's on my eyes, this is the Fenty Beauty, what is the Bomb Posse eyeshadow palette that we just did a review on um, literally today. So if you want to see that, I'll try to remember to link it up there. 
but yeah I'm, I'm quite impressed we're gonna do patrick todd tomorrow because it came to the sephora that i went to to pick up the fenty one so you'll see that tomorrow i might do three looks one palette with that or i might just do another look with patrick's palette and then just put on the mascara toward the end i don't know we'll see um but i'm definitely impressed with this powder i am quite 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 impressed and i have on all um, makeup forever products so I will try to use the powder with other products like the new ABH concealer I just got and see how it works with that. As well as with some different foundations and concealers like y'all know I got the Lana Comb one, I got the Patrick Star one. So I try to use it with those as well to like get a better idea of how it works with other things instead of just obviously with Makeup Forever products. But I felt like it would be best to try with Makeup Forever products because of course it's going to perform best with the things that's made in the same line as it. But y'all see how flawless my under eye looks and how... It's only minimal shine along the face. Now, I didn't try the waterproof claim, but I feel like it did a great job with the sweatproof claim because obviously you might be sweating underneath your mask if you're breathing heavy and you're moving rapidly around like I have to do with the job that I have. So, I think it did quite a great job, all things considered. And I would definitely recommend that you try this out because, girl, it's looking good. Look, yes, we look good. But anyway, those are my thoughts on this product. Oh, as far as the brush, bronze, and highlighter goes, let's look at that. So, um, I feel like the blush has completely disappeared. I can still see the cream bronzer underneath, which is good. Um, and I still see the highlighter. So, the only thing that disappointed me was the blush. I mean, it's a really gorgeous color. It's just it didn't last worth anything. Because as you can see, there's no blush on either side of my cheek. You just see oil. So, the blush is probably in the mask. Um, but that's fine. The point is, the cream product lasted really well. But I feel like that's because I put a powder on top of it. I put Fenty Mocha Mommy on top of it. For today's wear test, the wear test the day before, y'all saw I put on the V's um, bronzer on top of it. But the highlight is still there. Um, the bronzer, like I said, you can still see on both sides. So I'm impressed with that product as well. Not the blush, but the highlighter and the bronzer I'm definitely impressed with. But those are my thoughts. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Remember you all are diamonds. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Be blessed, girl. Bye.